Hello everybody, my name is Richard Simons and in this video I want to talk to you about adjusting your headlights on your Tesla. Although the principle will apply to many cars in terms of checking and getting the level right, uh, but we're going to talk mainly about the Model 3 and the Model Y Teslas here. It does seem to me that almost every time a car comes the other way on coming towards me and the headlights are a little bit blinding, it usually is a Tesla and it's usually because the headlights just are not correctly adjusted. There are two different types of headlights and there are some inherent issues with the later generation of headlights. So the 2021 onwards Model 3s and all the Model Ys in the UK, but we can improve it just by checking your headlights are adjusted correctly. So I'm going to show you how that exactly is done. Now we're not including Model S and X in this video because really to adjust the headlights and these you have to actually lift the bonnet and have a screwdriver to manually adjust the beam pattern and uh, the height of these. There are some Model S's where you could actually adjust the headlight height but that's literally just a height adjustment rather than kind of adjusting left, right, up and down individually. Uh, so Model S and X are excluded but with the Model 3 and the Model Y in the service menu in the car there is the option for adjusting the headlights yourself so that's what we're going to focus on in this video. So I'm going to start off with this car this is a 2019 Model 3 with the non-matrix headlights. The matrix headlights will actually have a kind of round eye I call it <laughs> but you'll see the round section in the headlights in here so you want to check whether your car has uh, matrix headlights or not um, then you're not sure just look for a round circle in the eye here just like I'm showing you on this clip at the moment however this car here is a 2019 model 3 with the earlier headlights non-matrix and we're going to set the level so I'm lucky enough here I've got a nice dark wall and a flat warehouse floor if you're adjusting this yourself you just need to find perhaps a flat section of road with a wall in front of you or a garage and I'm going to show you by moving the car backwards and forwards how I'm going to get the headlights in the correct position if you're not confident in doing this, uh, of course the ideal way is to go to a workshop and have them adjust it properly, but I've done this on many cars just to get the best out of the headlights because when they're correctly adjusted, A, it's safer because you're not blinding other drivers and B, you'll just have much better visibility. So as I look at this car here against this wall, these headlights look okay. You'll see on the later cars with those matrix a very different beam pattern by the way. They have this kind of L-shaped pattern. We'll come on to that in a bit. Uh, but they look okay, don't they? But look at this. When I move this car backwards, what we're going to see is the fact that the right-hand headlight is poorly adjusted. So I'm going to reverse the car up. I'm on level ground. And you'll see there that the headlight is too high. Now, moving backwards and forwards like this, what you want is when you move backwards, the aim of the position of the headlight on the wall should go down when you move backwards and go up when you move forwards as you get closer to the object. We can see here that headlight is pretty static, so we need to adjust that one for sure, because like this, it's too level, in fact it's pointing up a little bit, and therefore means it's gonna be blinding other drivers. So let's show you on the screen in this Tesla how that gets adjusted. Okay, let me move the screen around a little bit here. We've got one of our swivel screens here, look at that, it's very handy. So uh, on this Model 3, come to the car icon at the bottom right here, and then you come to your service menu here and we can do adjust headlights. And like I say, this will be slightly different from this car to the early cars. So now it's doing a headlight calibration in process. So it's moving both headlights right up and then right down. But you can see there that the right hand headlight is sitting too high. So now I can select to adjust the left or the right headlight. And I'll select the right hand headlight. And I now use the scroll wheel on the steering wheel to move that down. So as I scroll that down, you can see that headlight is coming down. So I'm going to start off by bringing this into level with the left-hand headlight. And I can move it left and right a bit as well. Okay, so it's about there to be level with the left-hand headlight. So now I'm going to go into drive and I drive forwards. And what I should see is that the headlight should actually come up on the wall slightly. As I get closer, it should come up on the wall. It's just lifting up. I'm looking at little marks on the wall, which probably won't show on the camera, but it's just lifting up a little bit, which means if I'm closer and then I go backwards again, if I go to reverse, now the headlight should go lower on the wall as I get backwards. So that fundamentally is testing that the headlights point slightly downwards rather than upwards. That's the key thing, really. So I'm going backwards and forwards to just test where that's at. And that looks... Pretty good to me. So as I go forwards and get closer, it's just coming up on the wall slightly. And I go backwards, it's just going down on the wall slightly. So the headlights are pointing ever so slightly downwards, which is what we want. Now the left-hand headlight looks a little bit over to the left, so I'm going to adjust that. Now because I've driven it, 
Uh, I actually have to come into here again, adjust headlights. Again, it will do the calibration. All the way up, all the way down. So you can see as I came backwards, that left-hand headlight's quite a long way to the left. Now, because we drive on the left-hand side of the road, we do want the headlights pointing to the left a little bit. So again, it just directs the main beam of light away from oncoming traffic. But that he left headlight is a little bit extreme. So I'm just gonna bring that into the right a little bit. And again, as I get closer, to test that it's still pointing slightly to the left, I want to see that come to the right as I get closer to the wall. So I'm gonna go into drive again now. And then it's just coming in a little bit there. Again, it's hard to pick up on camera quite everything, but I can look, look, look at little marks on the wall to see where it's at. And I go into reverse. It comes out of the calibration menu when I go backwards. That's why it went black. And it's just slightly going off to the left now which is about right so fundamentally i've checked that the car has the headlights pointing downward slightly and off to the left slightly which is good of course the best way to test this now is to get outside and the road at night and check what we really don't want to see is that this is pointing into the back window of other cars so let me just highlight the back of the car so then when you're out on the road, I mean, just look at where your headlights are pointing. I'm always amazed when I see cars driving along and you can see the headlights pointing on the road and you can see it's up in the sky. What you want to see is when you're a few cars back and you're just driving along at a sensible speed quite normally, your headlight beam pattern should ultimately, because remember it's slightly pointing down, would usually be about here, fluctuating on the back of the car in front of you. Sometimes just slightly highlighting the reflection on the number plate as you're going along. What you don't want to do is see that your headlights are up here and shining into the back window of the car because you're clearly going to be blinding other people there. So you should see your pattern just kind of like here, just a bit below where your headlights are. And the further away from the car you are, the more it will drop. You don't want your headlights just pointing on the floor 10 meters in front of you, but you should just be able to see the light flickering on the back of the car as you're going over bumps. So it's just a bit of common sense. You should be able to see exactly where they are. So test it, make sure they're correct, and you should have good spread of visibility and not blinding oncoming traffic or the cars in front. Your headlights should be ahead, pointing down slightly and just a little bit off to the left if you drive on the left-hand side of the road like we do. So now I'm gonna show you on a 2021 Model 3 with the Matrix headlights. Actually, there's a part of these two cars side by side against a 20 plate car here. You can see the difference in the headlights. This one doesn't have that round kind of eye thing. It's non-Matrix like the one we just did. And uh, there's a newer car, 21 onwards for a Model 3. You've got that kind of round kind of eye, I call it the Matrix bit, which is made up of lots of different pixels. So now I'm gonna adjust this in much the same way, but we'll bring it inside and you can see the difference in the beam pattern with this car. So this is 21 Model 3. And this is the pattern. You can see it's a very different beam pattern. We did cover a little bit of this in a previous video quite some time ago. So you can see this is basically made up of lots of little segments of light that the car can control. And this is what's frustrating. It's not really controlling them at the moment. This main line across here is your horizontal line. This is the one that as you move further away from the wall, you want to see that this gradually goes down. So you know your headlights generally are pointing that little bit down. But it's these segments which basically the further I get away, the more you'd see these actually come up. And we can't really do anything about that at the moment. This is where I think they're fairly poor headlight design. And what this tends to mean is if I'm driving along, maybe in the right-hand lane or of the motorway or dual carriageway, is cars on the left-hand lane will have this shining in through their mirrors. So these bits point slightly to the left. So the further I get away, the more to the left they go. And it's these bits which are not height restricted, they shine up high. Even driving on dual carriageway, you'll see some street signs quite high up, catching the reflection of these lights. So it's this bit that's very poor. And especially if you're gonna go and drive in France or Germany or on the other side of the road, these just point straight into someone else's eyes as they come head on towards you. And there's no way to switch that across. And it's what Tesla should be able to do is say, okay, at least manually, I'm now driving the other side of the road and these switch to the other side, or just, not have these unless there's no cars in front of you. So for the adjustment for the minute, I'm gonna do much the same thing. I'll drive backwards and forwards, check this main level goes down as I get further away, comes back up as I get closer. And I wanna make sure these are at least pointing off to the left-hand side of the car so that generally for most situations in front of me, I'm not blinding that car in front. So I've gone to the service menu, adjust headlights. It's done a static calibration. Now some cars may require you to do a short drive, I'll cover that in a minute. Uh, and then now I can adjust the headlights by doing left and right. But look at the pattern, it leaves me on the wall in front. So if I now adjust the right hand headlight, we can see how that moves up and down like this. See how that moves down? 
and you can see that L shape to it and you can actually see, I don't know if you pick up on the camera, but that's made up of lots of square segments, which is the matrix section. So if I lift it up, be up here, I'm going to bring it down so we've got level with the left. Now I actually know this is my car, I know the headlights are exactly right, so I'm going to put it back to, to where it was, about there. And I will test this now. Um, I'll actually move this right hand one slightly to the left actually. So it is now as far to the left as it can go. That's the best I can do for not blinding the cars in front of me. And the left hand headlight, again I can move that a little bit more to the left actually. And I can move it up and down and I get that level with that. Okay, so now let's drive forwards and backwards. I'm going to engage drive and the pattern changes to what you'd normally get as the main headlight pattern. So now as I get closer, I should see that they sit higher on the wall as I get closer. So I'm looking at little marks on the wall and they're just about coming up. And the blocks that sit up on the left hand side do come to the right slightly. And now they're going off to the left hand side, which is the best I can do with these headlights and not blind people. So I've got both headlights at the same height. By the look of it, I'm quite happy that's about how they should be and as well adjusted as I can make them. In fact, what I will do, I might just move that left hand one slightly more to the left hand side. It's got a bit of scope for adjustment there, so I can put it back in park, adjust headlights. This is its calibration process again. Now the left hand headlight, I'm going to move slightly more to the left actually. Like that. So let's test that out. In fact, they're both at the maximum left hand settings now. And going backwards and forwards just to test it. So even that block on the left hand side doesn't move that much off to the left, but it's on its maximum adjustment. But there we are. That's as good as those headlights will get. And I will test this with a bit of common sense out on the road again, just checking the main horizontal pattern isn't shining into the back windows of the cars in front of me. So within the headlight, you've got the matrix section there. Then there is other rows of LEDs which also provide part of the beam pattern. So what I'm going to show you here is what makes up what. So I've covered up the headlight on that side. And let's just look at the headlight on this side. So if I cover up not the matrix section, I come across like this, you'll see the other lights make up that lower section of the beam. So I'm going to cover it up like that. And you lifted that bit. That's the matrix bit. This is the bit that's made up of all the different segments that the car should be able to control where they point. Ideally, as you go along and it shadows the car in front and all that sort of stuff. So then just move the cover across the matrix section. A bit crude. And you can see that's the section made up by the other row of LED lights within the headlamp. And then you've got both combined like that. So one day, when Tesla do their clever software updates, we should be able to see what this part of the headlight does change. It should automatically go left-hand drive, right-hand drive, automatic shadow cars in front, low, high, wide, all that kind of stuff. So there we are. They're pretty good, bright headlights, but they're not as clever as they should be. Is the Model Y any different? Well, let's show you. If you've got a Model Y or possibly one of the very latest Model 3s, when you go to the service menu and adjust headlights, it may ask you to do a short drive outdoors to calibrate the leveling sensors first. So a short trip around the block uh, does a calibration and then you can again adjust the headlights in the same way. Now, why does this one need you to drive around a block first to get calibration? Well, it must have some other kind of sensors. Uh, we don't know much about that, why they're there or how that works at the moment, but you may have to have that extra step to do a drive around a block first. And this is the block pattern on the Model Y. So again, we've got this step up here and the further away you go, the more this increases. So what you've got to make sure is that this level line here is the one that definitely doesn't raise above and is high raising into the back window of the other cars in front. This line here is the one that should definitely, as you become further away from the wall, lower itself down. The matrix headlights, they should have some very clever functions. In fact, it can even spell the word Tesla on the wall. So they've got the capability, but we really need this software push through to automatically control this. We've got all the cameras in the car. We've got um, the ability for the cameras to visualize and see lots of stuff. But at the moment, the headlights are just not very good. Should we spell the word Tesla on the wall? Let's do that. So there we have it. The Tesla has the ability to do lots of clever patterns, really control the headlight beam, and even spell the word Tesla on the wall. 
So why don't we see them control the headlights better for driving on the road? The ability to have active matrix shadow the cars in front, have a higher beam around the cars. We have that technology in other cars and Tesla have got all the cameras in the world that should enable uh, the visibility and the ability to do all this stuff. And then if you drive on the other side of the road, that it could change the beam pattern across there as well. So thank you for writing the software for a nice light display and spelling Tesla. You've clearly got the functionality. Can we just see that now on the road? I think that would be a huge improvement and really bring it into the level playing field with some of the other cars and their excellent headlights that they have. So that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful. I hope it helps you get the best from your headlights in the meantime. We're sure we'll see some software updates from Tesla overdue course, uh, but I hope that's been useful for now. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed on our channel. Many of our viewers are not actually subscribed, so do hit subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications and new videos as well. And then hopefully we'll see you on the next video very soon.